have two announcements this morning. One from Kathy Walker, and one from Laura Brown. Good morning. I just wanted to report from the missions committee. I am so delighted. We have at least 40 pair of glasses out there. This is for our sending uh, eyeglasses to the eye clinic in Guatemala. And I hear there are 60 some more coming. So we have done just a fabulous job with that and I really appreciate that. The second thing is the collecting of baby items for the food pantry. They're in desperate need of baby items. I think we have about enough wipes, but um, um, 3T, 4T, 5T diapers, formula, that's what's really needed. And I'm gonna keep it one more Sunday so people have a chance to cooperate. It's out in the narthex. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a beautiful day after the rainy day yesterday. So I just want to inform you of some of the things that are going on here at the church. And some of you know we have a dream to put solar panels on our church roof, but we need a new roof. It will last, they say, for another three, four years. But we can't do that. But there's something else we can do. We can go to solar farms and have them provide us the electricity. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what has happened. The church council has voted for our church to sign on to a solar farm through a, a group called Neighborhood Sun Solar in DC. And I've talked to Bonnie Greer, a strategic partner of this group, and she told us how at our council meeting, she came on through Zoom and she told us how it works. So right now we have submitted all our paperwork and our paperwork will go to BG&E the 20th of this month and in another month we will be using solar from a solar farm and I'm not sure where it is. I'll let you know, but I have signed on also and I am using a solar farm in Jessup and uh, it's on a rooftop and it was very easy to do. Now, our church is saving 5% on the BG&E bill. I am saving 10% because I'm a household and you can do this too. I feel as though I'm helping the environment, I'm saving a little bit of money, not a whole lot, but it's, it's good. And um, in addition, this week I learned that this group will give $100 to our church for everybody that signs on. So already we have $200. We have $100 for the church itself, and then I signed on. So we can, and this Bonnie Greer that I talked to would like to come to our church after a church service and sign people up. So anybody who is interested uh, it's something you can get out of at any time. There are no fees, and you don't have to necessarily go with BG&E. All you need is your current electric bill. So we will make a plan to do this in the future. And I have more information. If you read in our newsletter, you will have some links, and you can learn some more. And I will be sending out more information next week. Um, and there are some other, uh, just three other short things here. Oh, I did want to tell you that this group is supported by the UCC Church. That is how I found out about it, and I went online to a meeting uh, that was sponsored by the UCC. Now, uh, already Laura told you, but Brightview on General's Highway is donating 60 pair of glasses for our missions campaign. And that's um, from one of our, I can't remember at night, um, it's from one of our 
board members from the church, uh, when, from the counseling center, I'm sorry. And the Basel building, as of Friday, is on the market. It's taken a lot of work to get there, and it's going for 179,000, just for your information. Five, thank you, 579,000. I'm not using my notes, see? <laughs> thank you. And I just want to point out, you've all seen it, our LGBTQ sign is up again. So, thank you all. Alleluia. The grace and Lord, oh, sorry. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. My name is Sandy Picard and I'm grateful to worship with you church on this day. I'm especially grateful to be here today because of the beautiful weather as Kathy mentioned after the tremendous downpours yesterday. I don't know about you, but I was starting to build an ark in the backyard. But yeah, beautiful day today. Let us pause for a moment to be present in this space. Let us in silence reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and spirit in this moment. God has called us together today to worship. Let us give voice with our call to worship. Please stand. <clears throat> My heart is glad. My soul rejoices. My body rests secure. For you do not abandon me. You give me counsel. You are at my right hand. You are my God. Apart from you, I have no good. Blessed be your name. The peace of our Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with each other by commenting on the live stream page or send a text to someone or shout peace to the world. in this morning, let us pray. Jesus, Savior, resurrected Messiah, we come before you from different paths, some of us certain of your joyful presence in our lives, some of us not so certain of the hope of being touched by your joy. Yet we are all here reaching out to you for understanding, for hope, for joy. For all that is imperishable, meet us here today in all your power and consolation. Amen.
And now I will invite our youngest to come forward, please, if they're so inclined. That ship passed for me, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Did you survive last week, Easter? Did you have a lot of candy? Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad to see you here today, okay? Now today, we are going to be considering one of our apostles. His name is Thomas, okay? And he's very famous for something. Do you know what it might be? He was a doubter. A doubter. What's a doubter? Someone who doubts. No, oh, somebody said, I'm not sure about that. Maybe you better prove it to me. That's kind of what a doubter looks like. Now, I thought for, just for our little discussion this morning, I would tell you about a man who wrote a book, and his name is Robert Ridley, Ripley. And he wrote a book called Believe It or Not. Believe It or Not. You can actually find that in the library. It's a good book. And he used to go around, and he tried to find the most incredible things he could find and he wrote about them in his book, and he claimed that they were all true. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you a couple of excerpts from his book, and you tell me if you think that this is true or not, or if you doubt it. Okay? Um, a man by the name of James Cook once had a chicken that laid a perfectly square egg. Hmm. Now, I've seen white eggs and brown eggs and even spotted eggs, but I've never seen a square egg. Have you ever seen a square egg? Do you think you'd have to see it to believe it? Yeah, so you have a little doubt about that. You say, mm, I'm not so sure. There was a girl named Jo Ann Barnes. She was 15 years old from California. She once swung a lot of hula hoops on her body at the same time. You know what a hula hoop is? You ever do that? You swing it and swing it. Um, how many do you think that she swung on her body at one time? Let's take a guess. Hmm? You say 15. How about you? How many things of those hula hoops do you think you can put on your body and swing around? 12. 15 and 12. You know what he said the answer was? 68. <laughs> 68 hula hoops at one time swinging around her body. There you go. Do you believe that or do you doubt it? Mr. Ripley said it was true, but we're not sure. And here's another one, one last, okay. How do you think, how, how long do you think the world's largest hot dog was? <laughs> A hundred meters, you're not too bad. How about you? How big do you think the longest hot dog is? 10 feet, and you said a hundred meters? <laughs> See, you're in that new math. <laughs> well, Mr. Ripley said the largest hot dog was over 3,000 feet and weighed 885 pounds and it took 103 butchers to carry it. Now, that's a lot of baloney. Would you have to see that to believe it? Yeah, that's right. Now, our friend Thomas, the apostle, had basically the same problem. Because Jesus rose from the dead, and everybody said, I saw him, he's alive. And Thomas knew that he was dead. So he was kind of doubting and said, you know what? I have to see it to believe it. Okay, he was a doubter. And Jesus did come, not on Easter Sunday, but the Sunday after, just like today. That's why we celebrate Thomas today. And 
Thomas was back with all of his friends, the other apostles, and guess who just was in the room? It was Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, you, Thomas, you said you didn't believe it unless you could see it. Well, come here. So he showed him the marks where the nails were and his side where a spear went. And he said, you, come here, touch it. Stop disbelieving and believe. And Thomas did. He believed. So we are celebrating today doubting Thomas, who no longer doubts but believes. We're asked today to trust Jesus. Okay? And that's the message today. We need to learn to trust Jesus, even when it may be a little difficult, even when we have a lot of questions, even when it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. You better show me. And Jesus said, I'm right here. I'm with you. Okay? Um, before we go, and I send you back, today is also a special day, too. Now, last week was Easter for us, right? We did a lot of celebrating and hunted Easter eggs and ate a lot of good food. Well, today, for a whole huge part of the Christian church, is Easter again. Today is Orthodox Church Easter. So on the folks on the eastern side of the world who came from a long time ago from Byzantium, okay, today is their Easter. And if you watch the news, you'll probably see advertisements about it. The Eastern Church celebrates Easter. There's a church right down the street here, St. Constantine and Helen. It's a Greek Orthodox church. All of their people are out celebrating that today. I'm sure their kids are out hunting Easter eggs too. So I wanted you guys not only to celebrate last week's Easter with us in the Western Church, but I wanted you to celebrate Easter today with our Eastern friends. So I brought you a little something to help us celebrate. They like bunnies too. I'm gonna leave this with you guys. Okay, you guys get to share this with as many people as you want. And if you want to share them with people in church, you're welcome to do that. If you want to share it with folks at home, you can do that too. That's yours. Happy Easter. Okay, now let us conclude by celebrating saying our Lord's Prayer. Okay. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you. Now we offer our prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Trusting in God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you. Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Listen now in the reading of Scripture for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts to the, to the word, word and, and wisdom, wisdom of God. God. 
Today's reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even the, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold through perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you may not have seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And our gospel reading this morning is taken from the 20th chapter of St. John, the 19th through the 31st verses. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, after the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Last week, Ellen began by going, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Now today, it's Christos Enesti in the Greek. Okay, Christ is risen. It's proclaimed everywhere in every tongue, the Lord is risen indeed. We continue our celebration of Easter. And interestingly, the gospel puts us in a time frame much like this. Easter was last Sunday. The focus of the gospel today is this Sunday. Now, St. John, when he was crafting the gospel, was a very, very clever author. He used many different symbols, like lightness and dark, things that were opposites to try to bring people to a focus. In his rendition of the story of the resurrection, John tried very hard to focus on not the resurrection per se, but on people's reactions to it. So when you're reading the gospel and you're trying to find the details of the resurrection, you're not really going to find much. Who rolled the stone away? It was a concern for the women. Why did the soldiers fall asleep who were guarding the tomb? Who was so neat and careful as to roll up the wrappings in the tomb and leave them? Why was Jesus so difficult to recognize? So many details about the resurrection, per se, we don't have. But John was careful to give us the reaction of people to it. The women went to the tomb and found it to be empty. And Mary Magdalene ran back to the disciples and said, the Lord is missing. John being much younger than Peter, and I understand this, John being much younger than Peter, ran ahead and got to the tomb first, and he entered the tomb and saw the wrappings all folded up and put aside, and he believed, just like that, because Jesus had said it. And John and Peter went back to the twelve to report that they had seen an empty tomb. And Mary was still there, and she went in and looked at the tomb, and came out, and she was weeping, and of course she saw this person she thought was the gardener. And she said, if you knew who took our Savior's body, tell me and I'll go get it. And he said to her, Mary. And it was in saying her name, that she recognized the Lord. Then John takes us to the room where the disciples were that evening. And then this, behind locked doors, suddenly Jesus appears. I didn't say how. And they at first thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not a ghost. Oh, by the way, what are we having for dinner? So he sat down to eat with them. He was flesh and blood. And then, of course, Thomas was missing. So we hear the story of Thomas today. The doubting Thomas. I think he gets a bad rap. We don't have a lot of information about the resurrection per se. But I think we very, very much understand a person like Thomas. Even my little friends up here, I was telling them what Ripley said, and Ripley had evidence of the truth of what he wrote. But it's like, I can't believe that unless I see it myself. And I understand that. And from the beginning, it's not just in our 
era where you know, empirical science is the basis of everything we try to know and understand. It goes back as far as the time of the disciples. They wanted to understand too. This is not possible. You have to show me. And poor old Thomas, while he takes it in the chops because he doubted, when Mary Magdalene came to the disciples, they were no different. They didn't believe her. Mary Magdalene, of course, we now praise as being the very first apostle. What does it mean to be an apostle? It means to be one who is sent. To be a disciple is to be a student. So the disciples were in the upper room. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, I'm sending you to them. Tell them to meet me in Galilee. She was sent. She was an apostle, the first, the apostle to the apostles. In today's reading, we hear Jesus sending them. As the Father has sent me, now I send you. And he breathed on them, giving them the Holy Spirit. Now they move from being disciples to being apostles. So we see all of these different reactions to this great wonder of Jesus' resurrection. John, who believed simply because Jesus said so. Mary, who believed because Jesus called her name. Remember all of the texts in the Bible where God calls you by name. The disciples who were fearful, but Jesus appeared and sat and ate dinner with them and then poor old Thomas. The thing that sets Thomas apart, it was not his doubting because the others did too. The thing that sets Thomas apart was his reaction. When Jesus appeared, he said, here, put your hand in the nail, finger in the nail hold and your hand in the side. And Thomas's reaction was the very first proclamation of the disciples of the divinity of Jesus my Lord and my God. Now, as I was reflecting on this text in my talk today, I was wondering again, whatever happened to good old Thomas? What happened? Once Jesus ascended into heaven, what happened to him? Well, many of the apostles dispersed. They went on missionary treks. Some stayed in Jerusalem. But several went off to do missionary treks. And although we do not have any first-hand scriptural text that speaks to where Thomas went, there is apocryphal literature, secondary literature, one being the Gospel of Thomas, which is not part of the canon of scripture, but you know, scholars still study that, who tell us that he went to India by way of a long trek but he finally got to Southeast India, and there he preached and converted. There were Jews that were living there, oddly enough, at that time in India, and he was able to make contact with them and establish a foothold much the way Paul did. And then he started converting the Hindu people. And the legend goes, because we do not have firsthand knowledge of this, that he preached and one of the Brahmin, keep in mind in India, from that time to this, there was a very strict caste system. The Brahmin were the top. And he was preaching, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And they took issue with that, okay? They were not gonna leave their caste system. And perhaps that story might be a wonderful thing for us to preach about some Sunday. Because I think we, too, understand in our own lives caste, white superiority, you know, our middle class status opposed to the poor. There's a lot of parallels that we could explore. But it was enough to annoy the people at that time that one of the Brahmin stabbed Thomas with a spear and martyred him. 
In the 1500s, the Portuguese were exploring that territory, and they were amazed when they got there. They found Christian communities. And these communities traced their ancestry, their faith ancestry, back to St. Thomas. And as they had access to his remains, and the remains were taken by the Portuguese to another part of the country where they had built a church, and his remains were interred there and are there to this day. You can go to India, and you can actually see the tomb of St. Thomas the Apostle. He went from a doubter to a missionary to a martyr. We are called, we are very much called, to believe. Jesus was saying, I want you to believe, stop doubting, believe. Martin Luther, when he was translating the scriptures, translated the word belief into fiducial faith. Think about a fiduciary. So we could translate back, insert the words that Martin Luther translated. Quit your unbelief and believe. Or quit your unbelief and trust. Trust me. You don't have to have all the answers. And we don't. There's not one person sitting here today, or standing, who hasn't at one time or another looked at all that we have been given and wondered, really? Really? We question, and I think rightly so. We don't take everything at face value, especially in matters of faith. Scholars have ripped apart the scriptures and studied them and studied church history, studied the Old Testament with the idea of doubt, what's real, what's myth, where can we actually have foothold and believe. Sometimes belief is hard, but trust, I think, is a much better concept. I don't have to understand all that God is doing. I don't have to understand the details of the resurrection. I have to trust that Jesus is the Son of God, and he rose from the dead, and he's offered us salvation. I have to trust that my faith will lead me home. It's trust, not acceptance of a creed, not acceptance of, you know, articulated articles of faith. It's trusting in the person of Jesus who said, don't stop your unbelieving, your doubt, and trust me. I could say so much more. This is one of those gospels where you could explore and plumb and do so much. It's fun to go back after and sit and read the gospel yet again. Three times Jesus says to us, peace be with you. Peace. Stop worrying. Trust me. I just faced the cross, but here I am. Trust me. Your lives may be upside down sometimes, but God hasn't forgotten you. We need to trust. That's what today is about. Trusting that God is true to God's word, that God has promised us, and that God is faithful to his promise. So today, I will remember and I will proclaim what Jesus proclaimed. Peace, be at peace. Peace be with you, for I am with you forever. Amen.
every Sunday, this church is here gathered to worship and observe the Sabbath. But in the days between Sunday, we are still being disciples of Christ by being active parts in our community, being present for one another, and bringing peace to the soul. Being present in our community to bring peace to our sisters and brothers and supporting the global work of love with Christians and people of faith all over the world. We thank you for all the ways that you support this church in time, talent, and money. Whatever you are able to give, we are grateful. Thank you for all your gifts and your giving. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am weak, I am tired, I am worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows dream, precious Lord, linger near. When my love is almost gone, Hear my cry, hear my call, let hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the shadows appear and the night draws near, when my day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. our mission that helps us to proclaim your resurrection to the world. 
Bless us and bless all those who offer this to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we share our prayers of hope and concern together, confident that God listens to our prayers and calls us together in response. We invite you to share these prayers now by raising a hand in the sanctuary and sharing them or being, after being called on or by commenting on the YouTube page. After each prayer, we say, God, in your grace or mercy, hear our prayers. Just sharing a joy this morning that uh, our friends Catherine and Joanna are here visiting with us and uh, are able to join us for this uh, worship. So praise God. We praise you for being here with us and we welcome you to come back. God in your grace, hear our prayers. Good morning. I just have a praise. Um, after many years, my brother, um, began recovery and tomorrow night is his second anniversary and uh, I just really praise God for that Lord we what a precious moment we we lift up your brother as he's on his he's getting his second year chip we just we just continue to lift him what's his name Mike, Mike. we just lift up Mike to you Lord God in your grace and mercy hear our, our prayers, prayers. Uh, prayers of mercy for my staff person who lost her son um, almost a month ago. She still doesn't have the body back yet and um, coming back from Hawaii and it is just such a tragic and she just um, is in so much pain. Um, I just, every day I just pray for her that she finds peace and, and unfortunately um, I don't think it's going to come very soon to her. Kathy, we lift up your friend, your coworker, at this time of, of um, great pain. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. My friend Marcy only has um, three more treatments. She gets them every two weeks. And I'm not sure I asked her, and she was not very forthcoming with information about whether they continue or what the situation is after she finishes this course of treatments. So she s seems to be doing really well right now. And uh, I'm just hoping against all odds that maybe she's healing herself. So please pray for my friend Marcy and continued healing from her cancer. Thank you. Hildy, we continue to lift up Marcy. Um, and we continue to pray for her and for her healing and also for you as her friend. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, just feel like a prayer of gratitude today. Just, I don't know if it's the weather or the last few days, it just, just the spring and everything's just felt wonderful to me. I've gotten to eat my lunch and my supper out on my back, screened in back porch, and it was just beautiful. Um, Kathy, I'm going to take this opportunity as a co-person of the um, committee that's looking for the minister to let you know that we finished the profile this week. <laughs> and um, the first advertisement will appear in the Christian Century this week, and we should be sending it in and get the final okay from our uh, association and be able to let the information out there for the world to hopefully send us lots of minister possibilities. God in your grace, hear our prayers. Prayers for Jesse Brogan, who had surgery this week. I have not looked in on him, but I will tomorrow or today. 
prayers that he heals well and gets back to normal quickly. Lord, in your mercy. Also, for my brother and sister-in-law who live here in Annapolis, their health is not very good. They're not very strong. And um, my brother-in-law, Bill, is going to have a procedure for his heart. Uh, and I do hope for both of them that they can get strong and return back to normal. Lord, in your mercy. Continued prayers for Anne's recovery. This is from John Ewalt for Anne's recovery. And thanks for UCCA members who have provided meals, meals for us. And there's a message from Ellen Whitco. I echo prayers for Jesse. He is still in the hospital until at least tomorrow. I had a one hour phone call Friday evening with my younger sister Nancy about my oldest sister Drew. By the way, Drew spells her name D-R-U. The doctors have determined that her heart is failing. She's had three prior heart operations, no more operations. We have, she's currently in an assisted um, living facility my younger sister is now in the process of arranging to move her into a nursing care facility. After consultation with the physicians, six months to two years outside. So that's where we're at, and we hope for you know the best for her during these last few years that she has. Martin, we left up your sister. Is it Drew? And we lift up your family at this difficult time. Um, may, her, may her time be pain-free. We ask these prayers in your holy name. God, in your mercy, in our prayers. And I just have a prayer. I don't know about the rest of you, but the news has been coming hot and heavy. And it just doesn't seem, news just doesn't seem to slow down in this world. And there's an entire generation of young people that are my, my kids' age, 25 or younger, that are making decisions that are going to ruin them for their entire life. We had the leaker. We've had those who have gotten their hands on weapons of war and have hurt people. And I just don't, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I have to turn the news off. I just, I, it would be nice if we could turn the news on and there'd be a, a nice, Happy, you know how they save the news, the good news to the end of it. I wish they could, we could start the news with good news instead of more people losing their lives at the hands of, of, of guns and just young people making really life altering decisions, not for the best. I don't, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to pray, I don't, I don't understand, I just don't understand. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayers. I miss Kayla here. She asks for prayers for my mom, for her mom, and as she recovers from a broken toe. Lord, in your mercy and grace your prayers and also prayers for Kayla as she finishes the end of the semester and her end of the quarter paperwork for my students before report cards are distributed I know what that's like Kayla Lord in your mercy <laughs> Thank you. 
Friends, we now pause in silence to hold those prayers which we have not given voice to today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now conclude our prayer with the prayer of peace, saying, O loving God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life, lead us from falsehood to truth, lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust, lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's beloved Son Jesus and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore Amen, Amen.